Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so this is going to be a lesson about how to make a uh, gene expression heat map plot using Python. So um, if any of you guys are like uh, like going to school for bioinformatics or kind of like pursuing like a bioinformatics career, this is going to be one of the most common types of uh, like plots that you run into. And it's a very it's very useful to include just like a figure in like a paper or something because it really it's really good for um, kind of getting the point across when it comes to like uh, RNA seq analyses or like other types of like gene expression analyses, and, um, and yes, yeah, so there's going to be a video about like how to make this plot uh, using Python. So I think it's a uh, it's definitely a useful skill to know for anyone uh, working in the bioinformatics field. Um, so if you guys haven't seen this before, so the heat map plot is basically like each one of these squares is um, showing the expression level for some gene within some sample. So if you see, we have on the on the vertical axis here. We have a bunch of different genes, like the, the labels of uh, of genes, and then each row is a bunch of different um, expression levels for this gene. And then the uh, horizontal axis, we have um, the names of the samples, and then each column is uh, is all the expression levels um, for for the genes in a sample. So um, so each one of these squares is like a certain gene in a certain sample. And uh, the cool thing about these is that it actually, um, you can see like how closely the genes are related to each other in terms of, of expression levels, and also how closely the samples are related to each other in terms of uh, expression levels. So you can see with these brackets here, these brackets are showing the uh, similarity um, clustering for all of the uh, for all of the genes. And I, I mean, these ones are actually showing it for the samples because um, these are the column the column uh, brackets. And then for the rows, we can see uh, the similarity uh, clustering for the genes too. So um, as you guys can see, like I, I've made this like fake uh, this fake uh, data set here, where I kind of made it so that I just called some of them um, some of them uh, normal samples and some of them were called tumor samples, and I made it on purpose so that the tumor samples kind of cluster together in terms of expression similarity, and so do the uh, normal samples. So we can pretend like these came from some like uh, some like uh, these are from like cancer cells over here, and then these are from just uh, just regular cells. And so I kind of, uh, I generate this like fake data just to like kind of uh, have something to work with for an example. And um, yeah, I can see like the, the tumor samples of course are all uh, are all clustered together and then the normal samples are, uh, are not. So we can think of these genes as possibly being like um, like biomarkers or something because they have higher expression in the, uh, the tumor cells than uh, normal cells. Um, okay, so I'm, just, I'm basically just gonna show you guys in this lesson like how to make this plot in Python. And um, so before we get to the coding, let's actually look at like what the data looks like. So this is a CSV file that I made, although I opened it in Excel just to make it like easier to look at, but it, it is um, actually a CSV file. So um, like the, the raw file is just each of these, each of these um, uh, cells in the Excel uh, spreadsheet is separated by a comma. And there's, um, there, there's a column for each um, sample we have and then uh, a row for each gene. And yeah, so we have, uh, oh, also by the way, TPM, I, I call these TPM because TPM stands for um, transcripts per million. And this is a type of uh, normalization technique that's used on um, like RNA-seq data. Basically, which means like out of, out, of, um, out of every like million RNA molecules that were counted, how many came from each one of these genes we're talking about. And so I just, again, this is just fake data that I just generated to just use for this video, but I, I called it TPM to kind of emphasize that um, you want to make sure you have normalized data before you start doing this heat map analysis. And maybe I'll make some other video in the future showing like how to normalize uh, raw data. But for now, I'm just assuming that like we have some uh, spreadsheet of, uh, of already normalized data to work with. So yeah, we have 10 tumor samples, um, it's numbered one to 10, and then also 10 normal samples. And then we have genes one to a um, hundred. Um, okay, so now I guess we're ready to get started with the actual uh, coding. So we're just gonna be importing like our some of our usual libraries, just NumPy, um, CSV library, uh, matplotlib. I need a couple extra lines here just cause like for some reason with the new Mac OS, I have some uh, <clears throat> some trouble if I, uh, if I if I don't include these lines. And then we're also gonna be using this library Seaborn, um, which we import as, uh, SNS just by convention, and then this is this library um, this library here. Uh, it's a really good library for like data visualization, and it has a really good um, heat map plotting function that I that I use a lot. So if you guys don't already have this installed, you can just install with uh, pip install Seaborn in your terminal or um, conda install Seaborn. 
Um, but yeah, so just, uh, just if you don't have that installed, just uh, get that installed before we get started, I guess. Um, but yeah, so so what you guys are going to see in this video is that the actual part of like actually plotting the heat map is going to be the easy part. And the slightly harder part is actually just like loading in the data and getting it in the correct like format to be able to feed into like the heat map plotting function. So that's pretty typical for like data science in general, I'd say. Like actually quite a lot of like data science work is just like trying to take some raw data you have and get it into like the proper format to be able to like run some code on. Um, so that's going to be, you guys are going to get a little taste of like that in, uh, in this tutorial video. Um, cause yeah, it's, it's mostly going to just going to be like loading the data in, it'll be the tough part. And then the actual, the actual heat map is just going to be like a couple lines. Um, but okay, so let's get started, uh, reading this data in. So we'll have, um, we'll have a, uh, empty array just called data that we're going to be appending rows of, uh, of gene expression data to. And then, um, an empty array of genes, which we're going to just append the, uh, names of the genes to. Um, and then we're going to define a variable called first that's going to be true. And so basically this is just going to... Because for, for the first row that we're reading from the CSV, we're going to treat the first row specially because this isn't actually the data yet. It's just uh, the sample names. So we're just going to use this variable to tell us like when we're at this uh, first row and, and when we're not. Um, okay, so now we're going to start actually opening up our uh, CSV file in, um, in this uh, program. So we're going to say with open, um, called it, uh, let's see. Fake, sorry, fake, fake gene expression data dot CSV, um, S, uh, CSV file. Okay. And then we're going to, um, define a CSV reader, uh, as CSV dot reader, um, CSV file, just cause that's just, uh, passing in our uh, file name there. Um, delimiter. Uh, comma because it's a uh, comma separated uh, comma separated value file and then um, and then yeah that's it and then um, next we're gonna say for row in CSV reader and so basically what what this line is going to do is it's just going to like go through each of the rows in our CSV file it's gonna allow us to just go through each one of these rows and then decide what we want to do with it so, um, you guys remember we defined this variable uh, first, just to know when we're at the first row. So we're going to say if uh, first, if first um, sample names equals uh, row, um, and then starting with the second column onward. So basically, we're saying if we're at this first, if we're at this first row, we're going to take the second column, which is index one, because remember this is index zero. The second column onward, we're just going to save um, this part of this first row in this variable called sample names, which we're going to be using later uh, in, in the plot. And then um, after that, we're going to say that first is now false. And then else, so if we're not at the first row, then what do we do? So then we're going to say um, our, our genes empty array is going to be appended uh, with the, uh, first, the first item in this row. Because remember, this is the uh, these are the first items in the rows here. It's the names of the genes. So um, basically, just with each row, we're going to say, okay, the first item is the name of the gene. So we're just going to append um, append this to uh, our our genes array. And then um, data. So for data, we're just going to append um, all of the rest of the row. So the second second column onward, we're going to be appending because that's that's the actual transcription. Uh, uh, data, so we're going to append that to our, uh, our, our data array. Um, okay, so if this works correctly, we should be able to um, like properly read in our sample names, our gene names, and all of our um, actual data. And then, so the last thing to do is we need to make sure our data is actually in um, in a uh, like a number type, so like either ints or floats. Because one thing about like reading it in like this is that if you just do it like this, everything is going to be read in um, into our program as a string. So we're just going to like even the numbers will be read in as strings um, if we don't do anything about it. So what we're going to do next is um, this line data equals np dot array uh, data. So this is just casting casting all of our data um, array to a numpy array. Um, oh, and then uh, 
s type int. So basically we're taking this whole um, numpy array and we're saying, okay, everything in this is going to be cast into um, the uh, the int data type. Because um, remember, it's because if we, if we don't do this, we're just going to get uh, it's going to be read in as strings, even the even the ones that are numbers will be read in strings. So we need to cast it to uh, an int. And if you guys are working with like decimal data, then obviously you'd want to cast uh, to a float. But these are all ints, so yeah, the ints, uh, okay here. Um, okay, and then before we actually plot, I'm just going to do like kind of a sanity check. So I'm just going to print out um, print out data. Um, I'm going to print the length of uh, the genes. Um, print the length of um, sample names, and then print data dot shape. So it's just to make sure I didn't screw anything up and that we have like all the proper dimensions we need. So just what I'm going to do first, um, just check to make sure everything is like proper, uh, just like it, it's proper uh, proper dimensions and, and everything. Um, okay, so. Uh, yeah, so looks good. So we had, um, yeah, 100 genes, um, 20 samples, and then our uh, our actual data, um, our data array is, um, is yeah, 100 rows in uh, 20 columns, which is what we want. Uh, okay, so now we've got everything, like, read in properly. That's really the hard part. And then once we've gotten to this point, it's, like, the actual part of, like, actually making this heat map plot is actually, like, really easy. Because um, uh, this uh, Seaborn library has everything kind of, like, built in already. So the first thing we're gonna do is just um, is just uh, make some like uh, name our name our plot object as um, SNS plot, and this is gonna equal um, SNS uh, dot cluster map, um, and then first argument is our um, our array of data. Um, second argument is gonna be uh, the horizontal labels. Which the uh, the name of this argument here is x tick labels, and we're going to pass in our um, sample sample names for that. So that's basically just um, that's just like the uh, the labels down here, our, our horizontal labels. Uh, we want them to be uh, the names of all the samples, and then um, and then we're going to just do the same thing for the vertical labels. Except the vertical labels, uh, the y, the y tick labels are going to be um, the gene names, which we uh, put in our our genes uh, our genes right. Um. Okay, and so that's that's really all we need. And then this this next line here, I'm just going to add is just going to be um something to like uh, to scale the fr the font properly to make sure the font is like small enough that we it's not all like, jumbled and it's actually like we can actually read it. So I'm just going to say um, SNS dot set context um, paper on scale 0 0.3. Again, this is just um, like cosmetic stuff, just making sure like the plot kind of looks nice and like the, the sample uh, labels are like small enough that they're not like all jumbled together. Um, but you guys could even just leave out this line entirely and it'll, and it'll still it'll still work fine. And then, so the last thing we want to do is actually like save our plot to a file. So we're going to say SNS plot dot save fig, and then whatever we want the name to be. So I'm just going to call it um, heatmap dot PDF, and then um, and then the really last thing, um, just PLT dot show, and that's actually just going to display uh, what the heatmap looks like. Um, yeah, so let me just make sure I have everything and. Uh, yeah, I think this should be good. So I'm just gonna exit out of this um, so we can see what it what it looks like when it uh, pops up. And uh, yeah, hopefully it works. Ah, uh, okay, okay, slight mistake I made, slight mistake I made. So the reason these are getting jumbled is that actually, um, so yeah, my bad, sorry about these guys. I, I didn't realize uh, until now that you have to, you have to add this line, this should be before you actually like make the plot. So yeah, sorry about that. I, I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, of course you have to like set uh, these settings like before you actually make the plot. Does that makes sense. So sorry, let me try it again. Um, okay, that's better. Yeah, so I know it looks small, but we we have to make it small so that like it's not all like jumbled together. You know what I mean? But when we actually like open this up, um, because it you guys are gonna see it like saved as uh, it saved as a uh. 
a file too. Yeah, so the reason we make them small is so that, like, the PDF is high resolution enough that you can, like, zoom in and see. And if we made them, like, too big, they would just be, like, jumbled um, together and they wouldn't even be uh, legible. But yeah, so this is the figure that we just generated with our code here. And uh, yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, I think Seaborn does a good job, like, making, like, very, like, nice, like, clean looking figure. And um, so, like I said before, like, if you guys are, if you guys are going into, like, the bioinformatics, like, computational biology field, this is probably going to be like one of the most common types of figures that you're going to be like running into, both, both to look at and uh, and also to generate yourself. So um, I hope this lesson will be helpful in like trying to uh, to make your own of these uh, figures for your own uh, analyses and stuff. Um, but yeah, so like usual, I'll just I'll put all my code on GitHub if you guys want to uh, download the code for yourself. I'm also I'll also put my um, code for how I generate the fake data on there if you guys want to like generate some of your own data too. And um, yeah. So thanks for watching, and if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, and, and see you next time.